Hey everybody, Nate here from WASD20, and today we are going to be creating a character for D&D 5th Edition. Today's class, the Ranger. Now a Ranger is kind of a, a protector of the wilds in a way. Uh, someone who usually lives out in the wilderness and is very good at living off the land and has as their job, I guess, fighting monsters and protecting the more civilized races from the beasts of the land. Uh, so there's pretty, they're pretty cool characters. Um, there's lots of very well-known rangers. Uh, a couple I can think of are Aragorn, of course, from Lord of the Rings, uh, Drizzt Doerden from uh, the Forgotten Realms uh, book series, and I'm currently reading the Wheel of Time series, and there's sort of a way in which the warders are um, a little bit like rangers as well. So anyway, rangers are, are pretty strong fighters, and uh, mechanically speaking, they also, you know, they get, they do get some spells eventually. Uh, so, yeah, they're pretty, pretty cool characters. I really like rangers. They're one of my favorite classes. Just a quick note on the character sheet I'm using today. I forgot to mention, I'm using one that looks a little bit different. It is, when you download this full folder, which I'll put a link to in the description, uh, the website where you can get all these character sheets. And uh, I'm using alternative form fillable. There's alternative too, there's a bunch of different ones, but I'm using alternative form fillable, which is pretty similar to the normal character sheet, but a little bit different, and I'll talk more about the differences later. But before we get into too much about rangers, let's talk about the race. That's where we're going to start half elf, and we're going to record our racial bonuses and all that. Then we're going to roll for ability scores. Uh, then we'll talk about the character background, and then we'll talk about class and spells and some other things. So half elf is found on page 38 of the player's handbook. It talks about here, one of the subtitles is of two worlds, and that's something to remember is that half elves are kind of torn in between these two worlds. They're half human, half elf. Now you could potentially have half elf and half something else. Um, it, it could work depending on the lore of your world, uh, but generally we're talking about half human, half elf. And in some ways, they're looked down upon by both elves and by humans because they're half-breeds. And, um, you know, you can kind of flavor it however you want for your game world, but that's generally how uh, it works in Dungeons & Dragons in, in the main game worlds. All right, so as we look at the half-elf, uh, page 39 has the half-elf traits. And some of the things that it mentions here that we get an ability score increase, uh, our charisma score increases by two, and then we can choose two other ability scores to increase by one. So I'm going to put in here charisma, just as a reminder to myself, uh, plus two. And then two other ability scores, plus one. And whew, I don't know, for a ranger we probably want strength, and this might depend on how uh, my ability scores actually are, but for now I'll just put them in strength, and we'll do wisdom, which is very useful for a ranger's spell casting. Actually, I think I'm going to go with, instead of strength, I'm going to go with uh, dexterity, because that's often a little more useful for a ranger's fighting style. All right. But it depends. All right, so we have here that half elves mature at the same rate as humans and reach adulthood around the age of 20. They live much longer than humans, however, often exceeding 180 years. Alignment, uh, we're not going to mess with right now. And size, half elves are about the same size as humans. Uh, speed, base walking speed is 30 feet, so we'll put that in here. Looks like we do get dark vision, thanks to our elven blood. And that means we can see in dim light within 60 feet, as if it were bright light, and in darkness, as if it were dim light. Only shades of gray. Uh, then, Fey Ancestry, you have an advantage on saving throws against being charmed, and magic can't put you to sleep. Okay, so I'll kind of abbreviate here. Advantage, saving throws, charmed, magic can't put to sleep. Okay, skill versatility here. It says you gain proficiency in two skills of your choice. Now, I'm going to just make a note of that here. Because I'm not going to select my skills quite yet. All right, so it looks like I can speak, read, and write uh, common and elvish in one other language of my choice. And mm, I think I might go with... Uh, Dwarvish? Is that? I can't remember if it's Dwarven or Dwarvish. <laughs> I think it's Dwarven. 
There we go. It might be Dwarvish. And there's a lot more to read here on page 38 and 39, but that's going to do it for uh, our purposes here today. All right, next up we're going to roll for our ability scores, and here I've just got four six-sided die. That's the method I usually prefer, and I'm going to be rolling them and dropping the lowest each time to record one of my ability scores. And for now, just to keep notes, I'll, I'll put them in right here. So this one was a 5, plus 3 is 8, plus 2 is 10. Not great. All right, let's try again. Big money, big money. Ooh, that's terrible. Okay, so this is going to be an 8. And that's another eight. This might be the worst character I've ever rolled. And there we go, there's a 16. And a 12. And I need one more. And that is <laughs> six. Oh man. Okay, <laughs> this should be interesting. Wow. All right, well, I'm going to stick with it. All right, now, for rangers, they usually recommend that you have dexterity and wisdom as your highest. And uh, unless you want two weapon fighting, then they say uh, strength uh, might be important for you. But I'm going to go with dexterity and, uh, and wisdom as my highest. So here we go. Dexterity is going to be a 18. I'm sorry, that's a, that's a 17. I only had a plus one there, so 17. All right, and then I can get rid of the 16. Uh, my t -t -t wisdom will be 13. That's the 12. All right, and then we'll make my charisma the six. Uh, six plus two is eight, so there goes the six, all right. And then we've got strength. Uh, we'll go with a uh, eight. Constitution. We'll do ten, and then we'll do an eight. Okay. There we go. Not real good. Now, handy trick for recording your modifiers. You can look in the very first part of the book. It's in there. Uh, but I'm trying to get used to using the method of subtract ten, and then divide by two. All right, and always round down. So if we subtract 10, we get negative two, divided by two is negative one. And that's our modifier for strength. 17 minus 10 is seven, divided by two is three and a half. We round down and it's a plus three. All right, so there you have it. Now, um, we can record our initiative is going to be a plus three. It's based on dexterity, thank goodness. <laughs> and, yeah, we can record some other stuff probably too, but we'll save the rest until we figure out our skills. All right, so we've got our ability scores figured out, and now we're going to go into the background section. The background section is on page four, I'm sorry, chapter four of the Player's Handbook. The background, of course, is a good way to kind of flesh out your character's story. And I have selected for my half-elf ranger the folk hero uh, background. Uh, there's any number of them could that, that could work. There's some that make more sense naturally, and there's some that you really might have to find, well, a unique way to make it work, but it can be cool. I think folk hero is a pretty standard choice. So someone who is well known for act, an act of valor or something like that, at least maybe in a certain area. First off, it says that uh, for our skill proficiencies, we get animal handling and survival, which make pretty good sense with a, uh, a ranger. So animal handling and survival. And the thing that's unique about this particular character sheet is that these skills and saving throws are grouped next to their appropriate ability score uh, modifier. And that's really kind of a handy thing that makes logical sense. It makes more sense to me than the way the standard character sheet is laid out. And so that's why I chose to try this one. So for the equipment, I'm going to be taking the standard equipment. Remember that if you are taking the equipment from the background and from the class, you do not get to roll for gold. It's either you roll for gold and buy your own equipment, or you can take the standard stuff from the background and the class. I'll be taking the standard equipment, just to kind of keep things simple here. 
Uh, so one of the pieces of equipment I get is a, is a set of artisan's tools. And as I'm looking here, um, there's any number of things I could do, but I really like the idea of the wood carver's tools. Um, the idea that maybe this guy, you know, he lives off the of land and he, he maybe makes wood carvings to sell, I don't know. Okay, so in addition to my wood carver's tools, I also get a shovel, an iron pot, some common clothes, a belt pouch with 10 gold pieces. And um, that's it. Now I forgot the uh, tool proficiencies. I am also, it says one type of artisan's tools and vehicles, land. All right, so I guess uh, I'll put for my artisan tools, I should put that in proficiency too. All right. All right, and now it is time to uh, roll some dice to determine some, uh, some things for this background, and I'll be pulling some dice out of the ultimate dice case here. I need a D8. I will need a D10. And I've already got some D6s, so I think that should be good. Alright, so I went ahead and I rolled for some of these things, and we've got some of our background figured out now. Uh, first off, our defining event, we were trained, or we trained peasants to use farm implements as weapons against tyrants' soldiers, and so that's why we are kind of a, a local hero of sorts. Uh, the champion of maybe a village or something like that. We also have this rustic hospitality trait, which enables us to kind of blend in with the common folk, and common folk will kind of... Um, defend us in a way. Um, you can read more about that on page 131. I just put the page number there in case I forget I know where to look. Um, then our personality traits. We get two personality traits and I rolled for those. Now you don't have to roll for these. You can just pick the ones that make most sense to you. In this case I did roll for them and I stuck with all the ones I rolled because they seemed to make pretty good sense. Uh, first, I get bored easily. I want to get on with my destiny. Um, second, I, I am confident in my own abilities and try to instill confidence in others too. Uh, my ideals are respect, and this is a this was uh, categorized as good, so my alignment will probably probably be good. But people deserve to be treated with dignity and respect. Um, my bond, I wish my childhood sweetheart had come with me to pursue my destiny. That could make for an interesting little uh, story and plot hook there. Don't let your DM find out. And then my flaw, I'm convinced of the significance of my destiny and blind to my shortcomings and the risk of failure. So these all seem to work pretty well together for me in my mind for this character. In terms of the uh, character name, I, I haven't determined that either, and I'm going to do that now. Um, I was just thinking about it, and I like the name uh, Lucas. And we'll go with uh, Lucas Perinin. Maybe we'll spell it this way. There we go. I think we're going to go with uh, chaotic good in this case. Yeah, I kind of like that. All right, and you can read more about alignments. I won't get into it right now in this one. But don't be afraid to put not put an alignment right away and kind of figure it out as you go a little bit, unless your DM absolutely requires that you have an alignment figured out. So the name Lucas Perrin, and I should point out, you know, this is more of a human name. And so by picking a human name, I've determined that I probably was raised among humans. When you're a half-elf, you never know. You could be raised among elves or among humans. Uh, and in this case, that name sounds more human than elvish. All right, we are finally going to move on to the ranger section now and get, get into the nitty-gritty of this class. Alright, so I've already kind of described it a little bit, but you can read a lot more about the Ranger on page 89 of the Player's Handbook. Uh, there's some good description of these kind of, again, rugged wilderness types who, uh, who defend the land from, from evil beasties of all sorts. We're going to skip to the class features, which are on page 90. And uh, the first thing we have is Hit Die. Um, we get 1d10 per Ranger level. So, Hit Die, 1d10. And that will make our hit points. Um, hit points are 10 plus our constitution modifier. And our constitution modifier is 0. So we're just going to have 10 points, 10 hit points to start off with. Which is not, not real high, but could be worse. And we're going to skip down to our proficiencies here. And for... Our class, we have uh, light armor, medium armor, and shields. For weapons, we have simple weapons, martial weapons. 
no tool proficiencies. We have saving throw proficiency and strength and dexterity. So I'm going to go ahead and check these boxes. Oops, not constitution. There we go, dexterity and strength. So for our skills, we get to choose three from the following. Animal handling, athletics, insight, investigation, nature, perception, stealth, and survival. All right, now I've already got survival and animal handling, so we're not going to pick those. And um, I think we're going to go with nature. All right, so I went with athletics, stealth, and nature for my three proficiencies. And now let's not forget that I get two more skill proficiencies because of my half-elven race. So I'm going to get rid of this now and select two more of my choice. And they can be really anything. And I think I might go with um, persuade, eh, intimidation. We're going to do intimidation and uh, we'll do perception. That's useful. Okay. There we go. So... Now we're going to go ahead and record these. Now the way this works with our skill proficiencies is we have our modifier right here. So for dexterity, they're all going to be plus three unless I am proficient. My proficiency bonus at level one is going to be plus two. All right. For all characters, it's going to be plus two. And so for skills that I'm proficient in or saving throws I'm proficient in, I add plus two and the modifier. So with strength, my saving throw is negative one plus two is positive one. So plus one there. Athletics, same thing. Saving throws for dexterity, we get plus three. I'm sorry, I'm proficient, so it's going to be plus five. But acrobatics, I am not proficient in, so it's going to be plus three. All right, you see how that works? I'm going to go ahead and fill out the rest of them. All right, so those are pretty tiny and hard to read there, but I got them all recorded, and uh, it was a lot easier with this sort of character sheet as they're grouped with the appropriate ability score modifier. All right, now our passive perception is going to be based on our perception. So we have perception plus 3, and our passive wisdom or perception is always going to be 10 plus our perception. So 10 plus 3 is 13. That's our passive perception. All right, so we've got all of our skills figured out now. Now it is time to continue with the class section and we'll talk about equipment here. So uh, it says you start with the following equipment in addition to the equipment granted by your background. So I already took that equipment from the background, remember? And um, th now I get to choose scale mail or leather armor. In this case, I'm gonna choose leather armor because scale mail would give me disadvantage on uh, stealth checks and I would only be able to apply plus two of my dexterity to my armor class. So um, anyway, the way it works with leather armor, according to uh, page 145 where you can read about the armor, is that my armor class will be 11 plus my dexterity modifier. So that would be a total of 14. And I would not be disadvantaged on stealth checks that way. All right. Next up, we can get uh, two short swords or two simple melee weapons. And I think I will go with those two short swords. Okay, I get a Dungeoneer's pack or an Explorer's pack. And in my case, I'm going to take the Explorer's pack. You can read more about those in Chapter 5. They have a breakdown of what's included in those. And then I get a longbow and a quiver of 20 arrows. All right, now I'm going to record my weapon damage here. And the way this works is my attack bonus is if I'm proficient with the weapon, which I am proficient with all martial and simple weapons, uh, then I do get to add my proficiency bonus of plus two and the appropriate modifier. And since a short sword is a finesse weapon, I can choose whether I want to use dexterity or strength. I would definitely choose dexterity in this case. So plus three, plus two, gives me a total attack bonus of plus five. And that is going to be 1d6. And in this case, it is going to be plus three, my dexterity. I don't get to add my proficiency to the damage. 1d6 plus 3, and it is piercing damage. So I put a P there. For my longbow, I'm also using my proficiency and my dexterity. 
and so it will be a plus 5. And a longbow is 1d8, and it is also going to be plus 3 for my dexterity, and it is also piercing. Alright, so just a word on two weapon fighting here, since these are both light weapons, short swords that is, I can, uh, in melee, attack once and then attack again with a bonus action. And so when I do that, it also means that I would be doing 1d6 plus 3 damage for my first one, but then only 1d6 alone for my second one, unless I take the two weapon fighting style at second level which I'm going to have the ability to pick, but I'm probably going to go with archery for that one personally. Uh, so anyway, we're making a level 1 character, we don't have to deal with that yet, but, but do read about those fighting styles and maybe plan ahead a little bit uh, what you'd like to select there on page 91 from the fighting styles. Alright, next up in the ranger class section we have favored enemy, and it says here beginning at first level we can have um, a, an enemy that we really are skilled at tracking, fighting against, we can probably speak the language and things like that, and it's probably from some kind of experience that we had. And from, in my case, I'm thinking that maybe um, my favorite enemy is going to be Drow. I'm thinking that perhaps um, you know Drow from the Underdark came and attacked this village, and maybe that's even um, the, the situation here, the defining event. Maybe it was um, the tyrant soldiers were actually drow from the underdark perhaps and so I have spent much of my time and maybe they even captured some people from my village and I have I have a real axe to grind with the drow okay now it says when you pick two uh, when you pick a humanoid you can actually pick two and since drow are humanoid I'm gonna pick drow and then I'm also gonna pick orcs so favorite enemies But it also has some other suggestions here. You could select um, aberrations, beasts, celestials, constructs, dragons, elementals, fey, fiends, giants, monstrosities, oozes, plants, or undead. I've seen giants as a pretty uh, common choice because it covers ogres and giants and some other things. Um, so anyway, I'm just going to stick with orcs and drow as my favorite enemies. And um, yeah, I have advantage on survival checks. Um, anyway, you can read all about it more on page 91. I'm not going to take the time now, uh, but it is pretty useful. It also says here you learn one language of your choice that is spoken by your favorite enemies, if they speak one at all. And I'm going to go with Drow in this case. Elvish, Dwarven, and now I speak also Drow. So the next thing for the Ranger class is Natural Explorer, and this is where you have one type of terrain with which you are particularly familiar and, and able to traverse. And for this one, since the Drow are a favorite enemy and I know and I speak Drow, I'm going to say that I have begun to kind of explore the Underdark and maybe even plan vengeance a little bit. And so, um, yeah, I'm going to say that the Underdark is my um, favored terrain. This character would probably be a pretty good one for the uh, the Out of the Abyss. Um, so yeah, I, I can see a ranger working really well there with favored terrain as the Underdark. So there are many, many benefits that that gives me, and I'm not going to go through them all, but there's like <clears throat> five or six of them listed here, and I'm just going to put here page 91. You can read all about that, but it's, it is pretty useful. So that's going to be it for the Ranger class for first level, but if you go beyond that, um, there are so many cool things that the Ranger gets. Uh, spell casting, you get uh, to pick a Ranger archetype, and the Ranger archetypes you can have Hunter or Beastmaster, and the Beastmaster one is super cool because you get an animal companion, and what's not to love about that, right? All right, the last thing we're going to do for this character is we are going to roll for a trinket. And that's something I often forget to do, but it's a lot of fun. If you go, so if you go to the equipment section on page 160 of the Player's Handbook in Chapter 5, uh, you, get to, you can roll uh, D100 uh, for a trinket. And it's just something not super useful maybe, but maybe story related and could prove useful. So here we go, we're going to roll. But something interesting, I got 30. A blank book whose pages refuse to hold ink, chalk, graphite, or any other substance or marking. Hmm. So, yeah, that one's pretty mysterious, but I'm just going to put that down in my equipment here.
Okay, so perhaps this is some kind of magical item, or perhaps it's something I found, or... Yeah, there's all sorts of interesting things you can do with a trinket, but, you know, try to tie it into your backstory, maybe. Um, yeah, maybe, I'm, I'm thinking that maybe this is something in one of the drow raids on his village. It was dropped by one of the drow, and he doesn't know what it is, but um, maybe it's something that then a DM could work with and work into uh, a story. So, yeah, trinkets are a lot of fun like that. All right, everybody, that is going to be it for our half-elf ranger, Lucas Perrinen, a ranger of the wilds who is uh, convinced of the importance of his own destiny and is uh, maybe out for revenge in the Underdark against the drow who raided his village. So, yep, that is, that is our ranger. Uh, if you have any questions or any comments, I'd love to hear from you. Put them down below. Uh, let me know what you think. And, of course, don't forget to check out my other uh, character creation videos. I'll put a link to the playlist in the description if you're looking for other classes and races as well. All right, that's it. Everybody take care. I'll see you next time. <laughs>